Well, hello YouTube, and what on earth do we have here today? Well, my buddy's got an important gig coming up soon, and he says the mighty Duesenberg isn't behaving itself. It's got some rattly string action, so it's going to get some of these nice new Duesenberg strings. And let's pop her open and take a peek. So hopefully it's just a question of neck relief, but it's got you know what? Yes, the Duesenberg tram. So that's something I've never seen before and I'm going to have to figure out how to drive it. But she's a beautiful guitar and a snake skinny if you're into that. And I suspect that the truss rod hasn't been set for a long, long time. So we're going to get busy with that. Stay tuned. So here we are on the bench. Now this beauty I can see from the label is about 10 years old. And she's showing a little bit of wear and tear here and there. A bit of a ding in the uh, nice metal scratch plate there. A bit oxidized, don't know if I can do anything about that, but I can definitely clean the rest of it until it shines. Yeah, trimmer looks okay. Doesn't seem to be anything broken there. See the saddles are, it's kind of like a tunematic bridge. Some of the bridge saddles are pinned way up to the front, so I hope it still intonates. I think some of these pickups may be a bit on the high side, but we can measure that and find out. We've got a slightly cracked pickup ring, but that's probably not a disaster. But I think our biggest problem are these guys. Mr. Frets, we have some pretty extreme fret munch. Ouch. And the symptom of uh, the guitar buzzing, which it does. I just played it a minute ago, and yep, we got some buzzy strings. Probably a combination of that and the truss rod not being set. So, as Uncle Dave always says, oh, sorry, Duesenberg, you're upside down. He doesn't always say that. As Uncle Dave always says, let's see if the truss rod works. So we got the truss rod cover off, nice and easy. Thank you to this guy. Dieter Gluadov, very good work. Didn't have to fight my way past anything. And look how the strings get out of the way of the, the place where you need to stick the tool in. Awesome. And I guessed right first time. It's a four millimeter. It is German. Okay, so checking out the neck relief. There isn't any neck relief. With the capo on, fretting up with the body, there is zero relief. The strings are touching. Okay, so that's why it's buzzing. I'm sure the fret wear isn't helping, but that's our major problem. So that should be pretty easy to fix if the truss rod works. Let's give this, this little fella a turn and uh, see what magic happens. Good news, folks. Despite that little hole being full of all kinds of unspeakable junk from the last who knows. Maybe Dr. White is indeed the first organic life form to touch that hole since it was built. Who knows? But the good news is the truss rod isn't tight. It's nice and smooth, so we'll give it a good. It needs a lot, so I'm gonna turn it half a turn there. We'll just let it sit for a couple of minutes, so then I'm gonna remeasure, see if it gave us some neck relief. Let's hope so. Okay, so she's tuned to pitch. After I've adjusted the truss rod here and loosened her off a bit, so let's check out that relief. On goes the capo. And I should really go and read what the neck relief on this thing should be. But I'm going to go for, right now, something close to 20, 25, 100 thousandths of a millimeter. Uh, what am I talking about? 0.25 millimeters. Something like that. I don't know what inches are anymore. So let's fret it up at the body and see if this baby can ride under that string. And it just does. I've got the A string just touches 0.25 millimeters. D string also just touches. So maybe it's still just a tiny bit on the low side, but this is a pretty fancy guitar and maybe the action should actually be pretty low. The other problem is there's so much fret munch that when I put the feeler gaze through, it's going down into the divot, into the fret. Maybe that's not a big problem, but it's not awesome. 
So what do I think? I think I've made a good start and I'm going to let it for, sit for a while and see if it moves any further. Meanwhile, let's see what else needs to be done. Okay, the next thing I notice here is, if you look at the bridge, right here we can see that this guy from the base end is much higher up than at the uh, the first string end, which is kind of weird. So if we measure that at the 12th fret, could measure it at the 17th fret, I'm going to measure it at the 12th, see what the action is. Well, the action is pretty horrendously high here it's close to two millimeters and i think my buddy prefers a low action so that's no good what do we have at this end do we got closer to closer to a millimeter there so actually that's pretty good at that side but i think we need to drop this here end of the bridge down a little so it's at least the same across the strings and we give us a nice lower action for the bigger strings. So let's do that. So we've got all the strings off. <clears throat> we've taped her up. And we're gonna do the fret leveling, which is always just a little bit scary, but she really needs it. These frets are super divity. We're gonna to have to take off quite a lot of material, especially at this end. But the trusty spirit level. There's a nice milled flat edge on the bottom. Some 120 grit sandpaper. And we're gonna see if we can sand out these nasty holes, which are really pretty huge. Wow. Okay, so time to get busy with the marker pen. Get some ink on top of these guys and I'll be able to see and I've got all the way down into those holes. Okay, wish me luck. It's a bit frightening. So here's the nut, by the way, that came off without too much trouble. Bit of a tap from the uh, flat side there. Rather more glue on there than you might have hoped, but it was enough to keep it there, so that'll have to be cleaned up a little. Here's my impromptu sanding beam, my leveling beam. It's a nice flat spirit level. There's 120 grit sandpaper. And what we're going to do is something like this. Not any really pressure pushing down. Just gently going with the radius of the frets and seeing where we're getting left. Black ink down in those holes, of course. You can see them right there. So I'm going to keep going until I get all of those nasty divots out. And then it's time to polish them, ground them, make them nice and round again, and then it should play beautifully. Maybe I'll have to adjust the nut a tiny bit to bring it down, because of course the frets will be a tiny bit lower than they were before. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, here goes. So I've been going for just about a 30 seconds or a minute here. And we can see if it wants to focus. Are those frets up there are particularly problematic. It's going to take a bit more effort to get those guys out. Come on now, focus for me. That's better. Okay, got to keep going. It's ugly, but it's got to happen. Not too much trouble down at this end. Looking pretty good already. No more activity spots. Maybe a tiny bit more up there. At this end, naturally where most of the action happens. Looks like he plays the D chord a lot. Okay, keep going. So far so good. What we're trying to do here is file away the, uh, the flat ends of the frets so that we have a nice dome-shaped top. 
we should be leaving just a thin line of marker pen right down the middle of the fret, which is what we've got right there. Turns out that these frets seem to fit the uh, the middle size, so that's the, the big size, that's too big. Middle size is good, small, too small. So I'm going for the middle one. And now, just got to do the rest of them. Looking pretty good. That end will be the trickiest part. There'll be a bit more work to do there where they're very flat. Okay, here goes. Here we are up at the top of the world. And yep, yeah, sure enough, I had to do quite a lot of filing here, but it's really getting there. These were very, very flat after I did that leveling. So you can see there's quite a lot of uh, metal dust formed there. But it's going. I think I'm going to paint that guy once more. Because after a while you always end up taking a lot of the ink off the top. But basically how it's going is looking like this. So I'm just going to select the right file again here. Which is this middle one. On the file goes. And a bit frightening noise wise. But, after not too much work, it's really started to take the edges away, leaving me a nice line down the middle. Much better than trying to use these guys. That's a lot more dangerous, they t I tend to slip and I catch the fretboard and take all the tape off. No good as well. My dad gave me some really nice old metal files too. I had more success with these guys, so I'll use one of those to um, probably make the fret ends aren't sharp at the end. But you can't beat having the right tool for the job. So we're done with the fret grounding file. Let's have a look what we got. Pretty happy with how that went actually. Much better up at this end. I do have a few little Spots down here that might remain, but I think those will polish out when I do the next step Which is get rid of all the scratches With smaller and smaller finer and finer grit sandpaper And I'm going to be using a very special tool if I can find it It's lives somewhere here. Now then, where on earth could that be? The flapper. We're looking for the flapper where could it have gone? I know I hid it very carefully earlier, so I'd be able to find it again, and now I can't. Ho oh, hum. It's just a bit of cardboard, really. No. Flapper. Flap. Here it is, hiding in the corner. Okay, so we wrap a bit of sandpaper around this guy. And then flap up and down and polish out all of those scratches that the file has left. So I'm going to start with ooh, probably 400 and go up to 1000. It's going to take a little while and let's see how shiny and beautiful these guys look when we're done. You can see I've just got a little line down the middle of each fret of the ink still left on, or mainly scuffed off, but these, these are nice and round now. So let's see how I can polish them. Shiny, 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 we're at a thousand grit, nearly finished. Bit of polishing with a 1500 grit, here we go, with three fingers, leave me three points of contact, so a bit quicker than using the flapper maybe. Ruby, ruby, rub, and circles, really trying to get a polish up here, and by now I can really feel that if I scrape my fingernail along the fret, it feel pretty smooth already, but we've still got the higher grits to go up to two or three thousand. And then the metal polish. So that's us done with up to 3000 grit sandpaper. 
And the frets are looking really nice and mirror shiny already. And the, only the last thing to do is the final polish. And I'm going to use this stuff, which is actually uh, well, it's diamond paste stuff for polishing horse riding tack. And seems to work pretty well. It's uh, it's for chrome. It's for stainless steel. Should work for whatever these frets are made of too, very nicely. Okay, so the last step. Need a nice cloth, nice clean cloth. Give this stuff a shake. We don't need a lot, and we're just going to use a new bit of uh, new bit of cloth for every every fret. That's probably too much. And here it goes. Just dab that onto into the frets here. Bit here, bit here, bit here. And we'll give that a good, good polish up and down, if I can get my finger in the right place. There it goes, let's see what comes off of there. Yeah, quite a lot of junk off the masking tape obviously, but that should be making us nice and shiny. So that's the frets all done. All polished. I think when I run my fingernail up and down the fret, I can tell the difference between a polished one and a not polished one. So I think this stuff actually does do something. It's hard to see it, but I think you can feel it. We got through quite a bit of sandpaper there. That's all good. That's what it's for. So now it's take, time to take the tape off. And we got to clean up the fretboard. Got to clean up the body a bit. Could use a bit of a clean. Clean up the hardware here. Give this scratch plate a bit of a clean, it's pretty dirty. And maybe, maybe we can fix that inside somehow. It's just a little bit sloppy. So maybe I'll take the plate off and uh, see if I can tighten that up any. Okay, let's get busy with the tape. Okay, now we've got those fats polished, it's time to clean off this uh, biological residue finger goo. So we're going to use a little bit of soapy water, just a toothbrush, and of course we'll wipe that stuff off straight away. We don't want any uh, soapy water to get down into the wood. And after that we can use the uh, lemon oil stuff to condition the fretboard. Well that all cleaned up very nicely. We've got rid of all the DNA in the goo and uh, added some fretboard conditioning oil there. And that's a lot nicer. Super. So we're all cleaned up, grime removed, bit of polish here and there. The plate's looking a lot better. And now the attention turns to this end. The nut. Still got a bit of kind of glue stuck to it on there on the bottom and on the sides. And because we've taken so much off the frets, it might be that we need to remove a little bit off the bottom of this thing to get the first fret action correct. But the nut looks pretty good shape. It's got a bit of graphite in there, duplicant. I think we should be okay. So, strings on, and let's see how the nut looks and how the neck relief looks. Make those adjustments and then we'll decide if we need to change the shape of this a little bit or not. Well, all's well that ends well with this lovely Duesenberg guitar, semi hollow body, Bigsby-esque tremolo. So, strings are on, everything's happy. Trust Cod, Trust Cod River, Trust Rod cover is back on. We've got a bit of uh, pencil lead, a bit of graphite here in the nut. Check the uh, first fret action, that's still nice and low like it was before. A little bit of fine mechanic oil in the, in the saddles here, just so it slips nice and smoothly. I just did the pickup right here, it was a little bit low. Hope that doesn't upset him because he likes the sound of that guy, but it should be good. What else did I do? Check the intonation, intonation for starvation, for the nation, all good, didn't have to touch it. Okay, so the action is pretty low. The neck relief is something like between 
0.15 and 0.2 millimeters, which is pretty low, but it doesn't buzz. Maybe a tiny bit up here. But I know that my friend likes the action really low, so it's going to stay like that. If he complains, then we'll just give it another little tweak. The action at the 12th fret, about one millimeter at this side, about one and a half here, so it's pretty low. And the neck relief, as I said, 0.15. Five, point two, well, point two here, point two five maybe. Okay, so that's the end of the story. She goes back in the case, and perhaps back off to make rock and roll history with my friend's band, who were called uh, Jay Says, and they'll be playing a gig at the Boulevard Theatre pretty soon. If I'm clever enough, I'll put a link to that below this video. So, sayonara. Until next time, this is Doctor White of Digitars. Home guitar repairs. Thanks for watching. One last little thing I forgot to mention. In the process of pulling the tape off, when we were fixing the frets, we may have just lost a tiny bit of lacquer there. So maybe that's hard to see. But what we did was fill that with super glue. Scrape it down, sand it with the sandpaper all the way up to the finest grit and then polish it with the diamond paste. So now you can see it, of course, where the paint fell off, but at least the ding is also now filled in. So actually from the other side, when you're playing, you can't feel it. So it doesn't look perfect anymore, but then there was a big ding in there and paint chips happen. But now it's good. You don't feel it at all. So, in some way, it's better than it was. So, last but not least, here's some thank yous. Big shout out to uh, Dave from Dave's World of Fun Stuff for all the great videos and all the things I've learned from him from watching his endless number of videos. Um, you'll be able to see that guitar in action at the Boulevard Theatre at the J Says gig, which is on the 29th of November 2018. So, go check those guys out. That'll be a blast. So, thanks to all the YouTubers I've learned stuff from, especially Dave, and have a great time at the gig. Ciao.